my grandmother was running the hotel. Okay. After her husband died, and uh, his name was Johnson. His last name was Johnson, and he was from England. Okay. Uh, well, uh, the sheep were from England, but he actually was Swedish because they were married in a Swedish church in Big Rapids. Okay. Um, so anyway, she's running the hotel, and the, she was in the evangelical church here in Reed City, and the people knew that she needed a husband. And my grandpa Velker was down in Ionia. He'd come in before the Civil War. He'd be, he was part of the Civil War, and um, and he. He had his um, sheepskin for being a saddler or a, a, right. a leather worker Okay. Uh, before he came from Germany. So he got jobs in, uh, in these big carriage plants where okay. they were uh, needing, needing that kind of work until the Civil War. And then he signed up as a saddler. But he didn't realize it was war. It was just army, and it was an opportunity for a job. Right. Um, so anyway, then then when he found out it was war, then the next year he signed up and he went through the Civil War. Well, then he married and had his family, and they moved to Ionia, and uh, started out in Marshall, um, and that's where his his wife had died and he had five children and one of them was very rambunctious and they had to put him in a Christian orphanage because okay. he couldn't manage this kid because he was working all day and so the church down there the evangelical church in Ionia knew that he needed a wife and up here they knew my grandmother needed a husband so they sent my grandpa up on a train your grandmother that was the cook yeah. Okay. So they sent my grandpa Velker up on the train to meet my grandma, who was a Johnson at that point, but okay. originally Trimner, and um, they they decided to marry. Okay. And then uh, at the time that that they married, he had branched off to Shepherd, Michigan, and had a harness store along with another man. Okay. And the two of them. And um, according to my dad's nephew, the story was that when they married, they decided you know he was going to start a shop in Reed City, a, a store, okay, uh, selling harnesses, and then he would do the leather work. And um, so he was on the train going to Grand Rapids to buy up all this equipment that he'd need to start this business. Okay. And some fella on the train surmised that he had money on him. Okay. And so when he got off the train, he had to walk a little distance to get to where he was going to do the business. And this other fellow followed him and knocked him over the head and threw him in an alley and okay. took all his money. Okay. So he had to come back to Reed City. Uh, and I'm not sure whether my dad had been born at that point, but when she, my grandmother inherited these five kids, uh -huh. And they were going to take the money from the store or from the hotel. They were going to sell the hotel, uh -huh. and then build the farmhouse that's out here on Roth Street. By Volker, the, the, the original the, Vel Volker. the Velker, the okay. Velker house. Well, okay. Yeah, and and so. Now, am I mispronouncing it? It's actually Velker. Velker. Yeah. Even though it, it's spelled V O L. It, it actually is O E. V O E. Well, okay. it's umlaut. It's an umlaut O. Or okay. Uma e, I'm not sure which. Okay. In German, so that I understand. It's got that. So it's actually Valker. Valker, yeah. Okay. And the Germans would say probably Felker. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, so any, they were anyway. So money from the hotel. Get, any, the anyway, money. so so uh, when they, she realized that she was going to be a, a mother, and she wanted one of her own, and that was my dad that was born, and so he was just oh. a little two year old, and all these half-brothers and sisters, the closest one to him was eight years older, and then ten years older, and then older Were there Johnsons? That. Were there Johnson kids also? No. So so she no. never had kids from the no, hotel manager? No, she didn't have any before. Oh, okay. And that's why she wanted a child, and she okay. was older, and so was my grandpa. He was five or six years older than she. And that would have been your grandpa who? Valker. Your grandpa Valker. Yeah. So, okay. so anyway, they get on in this new home, mm -hmm. And then he's got to go back to Shepherd and work 
until he has enough money saved up again mm -hmm. to come into Reed City and start a store. And he did that, I And assume. he did that. And then that's when he built the Velker. No, the... no, no. Then, now this is my grandpa. Okay. And, and, and so he, you know, is a Civil War veteran and tall and, uh, oh, one of the fellows in Reed City says he remembers him walking down the street so tall and straight, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> because of being in the service. Um, and he lived to be 93 and, and uh, well, 90. My grandma was 93. Um, well, anyway, so he had this had this business, and they lived uh, on on the farm, and brought up all these kids, and all of them all of them did well. Okay. All of them got into one thing or another, and and all the kids, their kids, have gone to college, and one, uh, well, it'll be my dad's nephew's daughter, is a professor at UCLA. Okay. She was, she's six foot tall. <laughs> so where did the Valker business come from? Well, so then it's my dad that, you know, I was growing up with all these kids that are so much older, and then they all take off and leave home. And my dad, being the, the only child of my grandma, mm -hmm. um, was a little bit spoiled, and so he said that, that he, he really didn't like school. He wanted to get out and really, you know, start doing things. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so he talked his folks into letting him quit school when he was just before he graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. And so he was, well, I guess he just drove horses for a little bit. But then he got a job uh, in a shoe department of okay. this big uh, dry goods store that they had downtown. It's where Yo Play, they had to tear down this great big three story building on the corner for Yo Play to come in. Okay. Well, that was the huge building. And they, they had like dry goods, they had a shoe department, they had uh, millinery, they had, you know, all these different departments within that great big store. Okay. And and so dad got the job, uh, my dad, Velker, okay. um, of uh, selling shoes. Okay. And so he sold, sold shoes for the, the guy's name was Neergarth. And, um, and he, while he's selling shoes, this banker comes along to him and says, you know, Stan, you're doing so well selling shoes. You know, I think that you, you, you could have your own business and I'd be glad to give you a loan and, uh, if you'd like to do that. So Dan went across the street and started, started his own store selling shoes. And he was selling these fantastic Boston <laughs> Freeman shoes. There's a pair over in the library now. You can see them. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and he was able to do so well that he paid back the loan in one year. Wow. And then after that, he was making his own money. And, and did... And, and so he did that until wow. the First World War came along. Okay. And then he knew he'd have to go into service. And so he said he got himself some barbells and he was working in the back room when, when he didn't have customers <laughs> building up his strength, you okay. know. And, and it was really... How old was he at the time? Huh? How, how old was he at the time? Uh, I don't know. This would be 19... up till 1916. Okay. Uh, he was born in 1890. Okay. Uh, so 10, 17. He would have been 17. Dropped out of high school. Banker loans the money for his own store, pays it back in a year, and doing and he's 17. Doing, doing well. Yeah. Well, anyway, the funny part of it was that uh, that everybody knew he was planning on going into the service, but they had these characters, and all the businesses all knew them. You know, they they tabbed these people that they were crooks or they were this or they were that, and then they kind of let the word out. Maybe they all had lunch together or something. So everybody else knew it too. In Reed City? Yeah. Uh, and so so Dad said this character came in and he knew that this is one that had been a shyster with some of the other businesses. Okay. And uh, and he was going to buy a pair of shoes. Well, what happened? Dad knew he was going in the service, so he got with this big outfit that would uh, take all the merchandise. Uh, so like he'd sell as much as he could sell. Okay. And then they'd take the rest. Okay. So he could completely be sold out when he left. Okay. And um, and the idea was that every pair of shoes 
I mean, nobody could return anything. If you bought anything, sales were final. Okay. Well, this character comes in and he wants to buy a pair of shoes for his five-year-old. And when Dad figured out how big she was, uh, he said, well, he thought that those shoes would not be large enough, that he ought to take the next size larger because they could not be returned. Well, the guy didn't want to do that. And he took the smaller size. Then he comes back the next day, wants mm -hmm. to return the shoes. And of course, Daddy had to say, no, we aren't returning any shoes. So this guy gets his fists out there. He's going to... Oh, dear. He, yeah, yeah. And, Talk about, wow. And um, he, he got my dad right down on the floor. And <laughs> anyway, uh, and Dad, with all his muscle building and everything, he felt he could handle the guy. And, and he got on top of him and... And and um, but they had they had it in the paper <laughs> that uh, Velker wasn't wasn't ready wasn't ready to wait until he went into service before he started fighting. <laughs> 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 oh boy. Uh, um, so anyway, he went into the World War and um, and he was over in Germany and. He saved these shoes so he'd have really good shoes to wear when he came back. Okay. And they're very, very soft leather, the most softest leather you've ever seen. Okay. And tiny, tiny stitching and wow. I mean just in, in the insides, you know, just just the best shoes you can buy. And I've got one pair and then there's one pair in the in the library. And and when we came up here to help my dad, uh, he was wearing those things. He was still wearing them at home, and and they're kind of a rust color leather. Mm -hmm. And of course, most people were wearing black, like going to church and so forth. So Charlie and I took him to Grand Rapids to buy him a really nice pair of shoes, mm -hmm. and uh, he couldn't handle. Them. They aren't comfortable at all. Wow. <laughs> you wow. know, from from what he was used to. Um, but yeah, so so he. Um, came back from the service and oh there's some more part of that story on the Bittner side uh, my mom's uncles all did very well and one of them became a doctor a medical doctor he okay. was a doctor Dr. Peter Bittner here in Reed City okay and one of them became a pastor and he went to S S uh, Seattle Washington okay very outstanding guy I just met his great granddaughter I think she plays a piano and she can play by ear just like I can. It's, okay. it's, it's really neat. Um, she became, she was a band director and, and a choreographer for her husband because he was a drama teacher. Okay. And uh, uh, oh, she is, that's something else. Well, anyway, and, and um, one of them built a mill out here on the Hersey River. If you go on, um, on the road that goes up to to uh, Three Mile, okay. you can go uphill there. If you go across the river there, you can see the remains of, of the cement and stuff where they, they had this uh, rolling mill where they um, rolled out the wheat okay. and the grain. Uh, so one of them did that. And, uh, and then... Uh, when uh, did the Valker implement equipment yeah, well, just, Wait, just, just a minute. Oh, I, we, got, I, we got, got to get there. Okay. Yeah, I got to get there. So it's, it's because, a way Because, later. because okay. all of that was happening, and and uh, and my mother, you know, because of all these people in her family, her uncles were all outstanding, and they all had gone to college. So she and her two sisters were destined for college also. Okay. I mean, they just... Their dad had a big farm out here, 200 acres, okay. and back then you could do really well with farming. Um, so anyway, she went to Western Mi or Eastern Michigan uh, Teachers College, it was back then, okay. in Ypsilanti. Okay. And then she became a teacher in Southern Michigan, and then when she started being interested in my dad, uh, she figured, well, if she got back closer to home, and back then, Marion, Michigan was quite a big place. Okay. A lot bigger than it is now, and they had a huge school. So she got a job teaching there, and she was teaching there when my dad went into the First World War. So she heard that they needed clerks. They were short of clerks in Washington, D.C. Okay. 
but and you had to have a college education to apply. Okay. Which she had. So she applied and she got the job. Okay. And she's working for the vice president. Of the country. Of the country in okay. Washington D.C. All right. The the back end. This is of, your mother. My mother. Okay. The back which, end. Which one? Which president? Uh, Wilson. Okay. And I, I'm trying to think of the vice president's name. I can't. I'm sure it's. I in can't the, remember yeah. that one. But anyway, the back end. Uh, it's it's in the executive building, and it's the old exe executive building now. But it was okay. the new one back then. Okay. And the back end of that bumps right up to the left wing of the of the White House. Okay. So you can get the location there on on a Pennsylvania Avenue, and okay. then the executive building goes on the on the cross street. Okay. Uh, for the front. And we've got a picture of her on the steps of that executive building with a satin dress and a great big wide brim hat and wow. these big high leather boots that got all the little buttons all the wow. way down the sides. Uh, she had a fantastic job there. How long did she work there? The whole duration of the war. And then my dad got in with the General Pershing's special regiment. He had a special regiment that he kept uh, for a whole year after the armistice was signed and the guys had to be six footers and excellent rifle handlers okay. and he kept this special uh, group just to parade and they paraded in all the major cities of Europe uh, in Paris and then London and then back to New York but that's all they did for a whole year okay. so um, my mom was still working in Washington until dad got out of that year and then they were married, and he, uh, of course, somebody else had a shoe store by that time, and there wasn't an opening for shoes, but um, Gid Gerhardt had, um, had a grocery business, and he was getting up in years, and he wanted to get out of it, so he sold the, the building and the business to my dad, and my dad had a grocery business. Okay. And my mom helped. She was the bookkeeper for the business, and... Uh, and then, uh, oh, and then when they came back and uh, to marry, then my grandparents, the, the, the one from the Civil War. What, what was her name at the time? Heinbecker. Hein, first name? Uh, Mary. Mary Heinbecker. Mm -hmm. She was the one that worked in Washington. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she was the one that uh, young Master Volker married. The, the shoe salesman. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And he was okay. Floyd Stanley Volker. They called him FS. Okay. And then they called him Stan. Okay. Well, anyway, um, so, so her, uh, my, my dad's parents said, well, they were getting up in years that they, that my dad and my mom could have the farm, and and if dad would buy them a house in town, so he bought them a house in town, and, and they requested they had to have an extra lot hooked up so they could have a big garden. Okay. And it's up there on a uh, corner. Well, it's a corner where the old Methodist church is across the street, and across the street from that is St. Paul Lutheran, and across the street from that is a school. Okay. And then there was just one house on the other corner, and that's where my great-grandparents, my grandparents lived. Do you remember the name of the street? Yeah. It's Bittner and Hig Higby. Okay. Corner Higby. And wow. Bittner. Yeah. Well, so, so anyway... Um, then, then as time went on, my dad was just, uh, you know, saturated with the whole thing. I mean, he would be going across Lake Michigan to, uh, into Wisconsin for, for uh, business to get the right kind of stuff to sell in the store. Hmm. And he'd be going on the train to Saginaw. He told about the time when they had this huge ice storm and the, all the trees got so full of ice that they broke right off at the roots. It was terrible. And all the wow. all the lines came down, all the telephone lines, and wow. all, all the communication and everything. Um, and and my mother was, you know, working with me and my brother, and taking care of cows and chickens. Now, was the store started yet? Yeah, yeah. When, the when store, did they... store started immediately when they came back from uh, he came back from service, and she left Washington and. They, they got, got married and and bought the house for no not the, the house for their well, folks for, for their folks in yeah. town with the extra lot yeah and then and at the they same then they got the, the farm, farm and started the business started the business Velker yeah wow. so so they got into too much too soon bam and yeah. my 
so when I'm five going on six, my mom's got cancer of the breast and oh they goodness. figured it was too far gone and it, they didn't think they could save her life. And even when I came back in 1981, the people in the church that knew me, our family, they said, oh, Helen, we remember when you were sitting next to your mom in church and your brother on her lap. Uh -huh. And we were all saying, those poor little children are going to have to give, you know, live without a mom. Uh -huh. They just didn't think she was going to pull through. She was in Butterworth Hospital for six weeks. Then Blodgett. No, it was Butterworth. It was Butterworth then. now. Oh, the Blodgett name came later. No, there was two hospitals. One oh. was Butterworth and one was Blodgett. Oh, okay. I got you. Okay. Yeah. And... Uh, so were we were okay. farmed out to me to my grandmothers and I don't know what happened to my brother. <laughs> we were we had two sets of grandparents, the Heinbeckers and and the Velkers, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, little uh, little me, you know, with my Bible stories from Sunday school and everything. I just said, Lord, I just believe my two grandmothers are praying and I'm praying that my mother will not die. And um, then in the meantime, Dad wasn't doing very well. And he thought, well, maybe that business was more than he needed. And he'd sell that. And he, well, he bought a five and 10 cent store over at Everett. And he ran that for a little bit. But he, it, whatever was wrong with him was still persisting. And, uh, and he was going to the Veterans Hospital and to Grand Rapids and to Ann Arbor. And he didn't think the doctors knew what they were talking about. And I don't know what the disease was because they didn't mention any names but he finally said well he was going to take the, his last savings and go to Mayo and let Mayo tell him what was wrong. Go to where? The Mayo Brothers Clinic out in Minneapolis. Okay. So uh, so he takes off out Is there. Mayo Clinic? Yeah. Okay. Yeah and my mom's just coming home finally after six weeks and she's had a terrible infection. I mean, they took off her breast, and uh, and they had to take stuff all the way down her arm with the lymph nodes, and wow. and and then she had this infection. It was horrible. Um, About what year was this? 1930. Okay. Something like that. Because I was five, going on six. Okay. Uh, well, so anyway, she comes home from the hospital. She's got her arm in a sling because they didn't know about exercise back then. Okay. And she's sitting at the table, and here comes my dad back from Minneapolis, okay. sitting across the table. And so she's wanting to know, well, what did the doctor say? And he says, well, they told me that I better go home and get my life put together because I'm not going to be around very long. Okay. So my mom, just sitting there next to me, she says, well, then I'll just have to take off this sling, and we'll have to live off the land if your dad can't work. And so I'm sitting there, and inside of me, I'm praying. And I'm saying, Lord, my two grandmothers prayed, and I prayed that my mom would not die. My mom came home. She did not die. And now I'm believing my dad won't die either. Well, he couldn't do anything. And so uh, my mom, and, and it was probably the best thing that could have happened, because she had to take off that sling. Uh -huh. They had a barn full of cows. And, and a whole big raft of chickens because he was selling the eggs at the store. Okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, uh, so then uh, while she was in Grand Rapids in the hospital, Glenn Page, the neighbor, uh, knew my dad was down there with her and knew the seriousness of it. So he came over and, and milked all the cows while, while my dad was gone. Wow. And then my dad, knowing that he couldn't handle all of that, and uh, said something to Glenn. He said, well, uh, well, I don't know. They worked it out that, that Glenn would like to start a dairy. Okay. So he bought up all the 40 head of cattle of my dad's and started the Page Dairy. Okay. And that went on for a while here at Reed City. Um, so anyway, dad couldn't work, and I'm praying every day going, we, it's a little over, well, not quite a mile to walk. And we were walking to school from the farm just to the Reed City Schools. Okay. And I'd pray all the way to school, and I'd pray all recess. <laughs> and, uh, okay. and I know I was uptight because we had to have uh, a tetanus shot 
in second grade, and um, I passed out. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I, I, I just feel, you know, looking back on it now, that that's probably why. But anyway, um, they, the first year, Dad could hardly do anything, and then he started doing little things around home. Okay. Uh, improving his workshop and building cabinets and improving the kitchen, and et cetera. And then he got a help in the janitor at school and uh, just part-time kind of thing. Okay. And then he got other part-time jobs. And, and then he felt better. By three years, he felt he was good enough to really take on a full-time job. But there was depression. Nobody had any jobs. So he went to the congressman, and uh, it was Cunningham, uh, uh, Callahan. And he was the one that owned all that big property that Eagle Village is on now. Okay. A whole track of land up there. Callahan Orchards, they called it. Um, well, anyway, he told Dad, he says, I think they're hiring down at the Michigan prison down in Jackson. He said, if you want a job, maybe you can get a job be a guard down there. So Dad went down, took the interview, and, and it was, he felt like, well, this is something, you know, at least it's something. So. Um, he got the job like in January, but he figured we wouldn't move until spring because of the kids in school, lots of kids in school. So come spring, then <coughs> mother had to have <coughs> an auction sale and sell off all this stuff because we were going to live in the city and the only house he could find <coughs> that he could afford, <coughs> excuse me, was $40 a month and it was a little bungalow, a two, two bedroom bungalow. And so, you know, she's selling off all this stuff like crazy. And then we're just ready to move down there, and he found this great big three-story house on a big corner lot that had a half acre of fruit trees, three-car garage, <laughs> and $40 a month, same price. Wow. <laughs> and so we get down there. Well, then he wasn't going to leave my grandmother. My dad, my grandpa had died, and he wasn't going to leave my grandma Velker up here all by herself when okay. he couldn't take care of her. So she came down to live with us. And fortunately, there was a, a master bedroom downstairs with a bath, and then all the rest of the bedrooms are upstairs, five of them. Wow. <laughs> and uh, it, it turned out that it was a gambler's house. Okay. And his wife was very persnickety, and they said that. They didn't know how many times that they redid this or that or something else because it wasn't just quite right. And it had parquet flooring, I mean, designs in the hardwood floor. Wow. It had gas jets all through the upstairs that you could use instead of electricity. Wow. Um, and marble in the bathrooms. <laughs> it, and, and we had no furniture. <laughs> wow. So now that table and chairs over there in the buffet. Okay. Our, 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 our pieces of furniture that my mother bought because we didn't have a dining room table. Wow. The, the, the buffet over there? Yeah, the buffet and the table and the chairs. Wow. And so that was for the first... Yeah, that's like 1937. Wow. When we were down there. Well, anyway, Dad went through a lot of innuendos with the, the work in the prison and one time they had a riot and to go into the dining room it was a, a very narrow passage where your shoulders would touch the walls on either side okay. and it would be six prisoners and a guard and six prisoners and a guard well one of these prisoners smuggled in a binder twine knife which is like a ring with a curved blade mm -hmm. okay yeah and, and uh, as they were going through this passageway he just slashed this guard in front of him just slashed him in pieces with this thing and then they get into the dining area and they were throwing their tin plates all over the place and um, I mean dad had to put up with a whole bunch of that stuff and finally he said that's enough but in the meantime he was going to the Lord big time and um, he he really I don't know if I should get into all of that but uh, he thought he had accepted the Lord when he was little growing up, mm -hmm. but all the people in the church had all this joy. Mm -hmm. Well, that was because they came out of this revival in Canada. Okay. And the children's children maybe didn't have quite as much, so I don't okay. know if they were speaking in tongues or not. Okay. But they had, a, they had joy. 
and he and then they would tarry you know if they went forward to the altar they'd wait until the joy came okay they just didn't just accept Jesus uh, as their savior and let her go with that well anyway he went forward to accept the Lord and he didn't get any joy so okay. he thought he wasn't saved okay and this so is your father my father yeah okay and so then you know even with all this leading up to um, his illness he wasn't eating right he was out there having beers with the guys mm -hmm. and smoking and um, and uh, somehow he got in with a Baptist pastor and uh, telling him his story and everything and I think that was yeah that would have been before we went to Jackson and um, a Baptist pastor says well I want you to come into my Thursday night prayer meeting and give your testimony of how you accepted the Lord because he told that dad, dad said he'd gone up there to accept the Lord well dad said he well but first he told him to go home and pray so dad said he went home and prayed till midnight and he prayed all around the world he prayed everything you could think of and nothing happened so he said that to the pastor and the pastor said you come into my prayer meeting he says I think you're saved and you don't know it and um, so dad went in and he said he wrote down on a little card what he was going to say <laughs> and he said he got up there and he said well as a kid he went forward to accept Jesus in his heart and he no more and said that and he said the the tears came rushing out of his eyes and the joy was inside of him and he knew that he knew that he knew that he'd accepted Jesus hmm. and uh, so that that was the beginning but then with the prison thing he was reaching out with more to the pastor for to to get more because he knew he needed everything the Lord would give him to be able to survive mm -hmm. and so we've got the whole Matthew Henry commentaries over there <laughs> he bought <laughs> wait a minute wow he was studying <laughs> uh-huh yeah and uh, then uh, then he came back up here because he, he felt that city life wasn't for him and prison life was not for him and in some way he'd start a business and he knew my brother was not interested in a store like the rest of the family had had okay my brother was into farming big time and on my mom's side there's a long string of, of, of big time farmers even in Canada okay um, and so it came by through the generations but Oh, that's all my brother wanted. He wanted to get into 4-H and he wanted to be with, uh, with, the, with all this farming stuff for kids. And uh, he, he wasn't really interested in studying a lot, but he, he loved sports. He was playing basketball and football. And uh, he, he was doing really well. He's especially good in math. And uh, so anyway, my dad knew that farming is what he wanted, but you know, how could you make money farming now? I mean, in, in the time, that'd be back in uh, the 40s. You had to have a thousand acres if you really wanted to make a living with farming. Mm -hmm. And and so he thought, well, if he got into something that was connected with farming. And so he thought about the farm implement business. Oh, and that's when and the, so, the Valkyrie. So he started saving his money, and I don't know but what maybe they had a mortgage farm to get started. But he built that building out there. That On Roth. Yeah. There, there's a, there's, and about what year was that? Well, it was during the 40s when he built it. But he had to start, you know, from someplace. But that was after he got the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that he had the joy of the Lord At, before he went to Jackson. Before he went to, um, where did that fit in with your mother's illness and his illness? Well, they, my mom. The, the illness was that before he got the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then he got the joy of the Lord, and then he went to Jackson, and didn't he come back? Yeah, and then came back, and and then, and, and then his m motive was to get, uh, and then he get a the, big building built okay. so, he, so he'd have a, uh, an office and a place to, to 
to sell the stuff, and then he'd have this like big warehouse to put the farm implements in. Okay. And um, did he ever wind up moving to Big Rapids? No. That came after. No. So so that the, that the, the was business. that was his his business. Okay. And then when it came time for college, uh, he wanted my brother to go to Michigan State, so that he'd have a good farm background with for his because he figured my brother would just carry on with what he'd started. Mm -hmm. And the story was, well, I started teaching piano when I was in the eighth grade. Right. And I started playing the organ for churches when I was in the ninth grade. Right. United Church in Big Rapids first and, right. and then Episcopal Church. And I saved every penny right. because I wanted to go to college. I knew I wanted to go to college and I wasn't sure whether I wanted to major in music because I... Uh, I hurt my, I, I cut myself right there, and that tendon just tightened up. Okay. Where before I could reach, farther uh, from, from middle C up to F. So you have a limited range in your right hand still. Well, not not not, not, not normally, but I okay. mean before that I but could the go time you did. two more spaces. Okay. Well. So I kind of gave up the idea of being a concert pianist. <laughs> Uh, oh, <laughs> and uh, okay. and I was thinking of teaching because you know I taught all those years with little mm -hmm. kids and um, and so anyway my parents thinking was well Helen wants to go to college and she's saving up her money and she'll get to college no matter what we can't afford to send two kids to college and if we don't send my son my brother mm -hmm. he won't get there because he doesn't care that much about studying right so we'll pay for him to go, and then Helen will have to figure something out. Figure something and out. And you did, didn't you? Wind up paying twenty dollars an hour back when you, you, you or you got twenty dollars an hour teaching. Yeah, lessons. but not to start with. Not to start with. Okay. To start with, I was, and this was wartime. Right. Uh, I was coming back every Saturday from CMU. CMU hmm. was the only thing I could afford. Okay. But I teach all day Saturday. Okay, here. Yeah. Oh, okay. And if you can believe, there'd be 15, 16 of us girls, college mm -hmm. girls, standing out there hitchhiking. Really? In Mount Pleasant to get a ride. And you do that every week? To, every week. You hitchhike? Yeah, and some of the time, uh, after a while, there was uh, uh, Pearl Feist. She was over there getting her master's, and she heard that I was coming back and forth. When she could come back and forth, it wasn't every weekend. Right. Then I could ride with her. Wow. And then it was, I felt like it was too much and I wasn't getting that much out of it. So I was getting a dollar a lesson back then. Okay, and then, but later on, not too far after that, you were studying at Michigan State. Getting yeah, $20 yeah. Well, there, there's, there's some, lots of stuff in between. Okay. But, I, but at, at uh, CMU, I didn't. Well, I played the baritone horn in the band for two years. Okay. I was second chair. And um, and I liked that. And I was wanting to do that at Michigan State, but they wouldn't allow girls in the band. Okay. Where, so where, at what point did Valker wind up moving to Big Rapids? Uh, well, that wasn't until, see, I'm over there at Michigan, or at CMU, mm -hmm. and then I ended up uh, going to... Michigan State, but in the meantime, my brother had had two years, well, I was two years ahead of him, mm -hmm. and but then, oh, and then he went into the service, okay. my brother did, he was in the Navy, Okay. He, they were sorting out mines over in Japan, Okay. in the water, wow. uh, and then when he came back from the Navy, that's when he went to Michigan State, Okay. and then he had two years there, mm -hmm. and then he uh, worked with... Um, this John Deere dealer in Grand Rapids in Comstock Park. Okay. And and worked for him. And between that and what he studied mm -hmm. at Michigan State, he figured Big Rapids was a better place to have the business, the a John Deere mm -hmm. business, okay. than Reed City. And so. And my dad had already had steel chainsaws and uh, I don't know all these uh, different concerns that he'd been tied up with. Okay. And so when my brother said he was going to start his business in Big Rapids, 
then my dad phased out because he didn't want to be in competition. So Breed City phased out and Big Rapids started. It didn't actually technically move. That's right.